more people are said to have climbed Mount Takao than any other peak in Japan. It's visited by around 2.7 million people per year, and it's actually in Tokyo. Mount Takao, only 50 minutes by train from the city center, is a lushly wooded paradise where nature parades its four seasons. In a world-famous guidebook, Mount Takao gets the maximum three stars for its combination of beauty and accessibility. It has been regarded since ancient times as a place where sacred beings dwell. For centuries, religious devotees have performed ascetic practices here. This time on Javanology Plus, our topic is Mount Takao. We'll explore why it has been so special to the Japanese for so long. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus. I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm out on the western edge of Tokyo, at the foot of Mount Takao, probably the most accessible mountain from the heart of the city. It's still eight o'clock in the morning, but already there's a steady stream of climbers coming through here, as you can see. And this time of year, late November going into December, is the ideal time to come here to see the autumn leaves. I'll be setting off for the summit in just a moment, but before that, let's have a quick look at some of the routes up the mountain. Mount Takao, on the outskirts of Tokyo, rises 599 meters. There are a variety of routes you can take to reach the summit. Some offer the chance to hike through deep forest. Others are paved and easy, even for first-time climbers. There are even chairlifts and cable cars that will whisk you halfway up the mountain. The wide choice of routes makes the ascent possible for just about everyone, from young children to the elderly. And more foreign tourists have been visiting Mount Takao in recent years, especially since it was featured in a famous guidebook. Well, we've cheated a little bit and taken a ride on a rather steep cable car that takes just six minutes to bring you halfway up the mountain. And then you can take a look out here on a clear day. You can see all the way across Tokyo. Unfortunately, it's not such a clear day today, but I think you get an idea of what it's like. They call this a trail, but as you can see, it's well paved and easily negotiable, even for city slickers like myself. Having said that, uh, as you can see, uh, we are surrounded by trees. It's a forest and the quality of the air is completely different from central Tokyo. It's really nice. Mount Takao is not a very tall mountain, but it is renowned for its rich flora and fauna. Around 240 species of tree grow on the mountain. In autumn, it is aflame with the yellow of Japanese spice bush and the red of Japanese maple. The many species of flowers and shrubs means something is always blooming. This is a spring flower, a kind of violet known as Takao Sumide. It's one of the over 60 plants that were first discovered on this very mountain. Around 1,300 kinds of plants have been identified on Mount Takao. Not even some countries can compete with that degree of plant diversity. Why does Mount Takao have such a wide range of plant life? The answer is climate zones. Geographically, Mount Takao is at the boundary between two climate zones, cool temperate and warm temperate. So, cool temperate species like Japanese beech and warm temperate ones like oak mingle. Numerous types of birds can also be observed in the forests of Mount Takao all through the year. 
The mountain streams are home to the landlocked Masu salmon, which only lives in pristine water. At night, you might spot a giant flying squirrel. This species prefers deep forest with high trees, so its presence on Mount Takao is evidence of a thriving ecosystem. Finally, let's look at some seasonal highlights of Mount Takao. In springtime, it is a famous site for cherry blossom viewing. Many visitors relish a leisurely ascent amid the pale flowers. As spring greenery appears, the forest pulses with new life. It's a wonderful time to hike the mountain woods. In the summertime, a beer garden opens halfway up the mountain. A cold beer is just the thing after a hot, sweaty hike. And in autumn, the leaves cloak the mountain in fiery colors. At any time of the year, Mount Takao is a tempting oasis of natural beauty. One reason for the mountain's popularity is that it's an easy day trip away from the hustle and bustle of Tokyo, a convenient plunge into the great outdoors. What's that sound you're probably thinking? And, well, you might. You're about to meet our guest for today. Shujin Sato is a Yamabushi. Yamabushi are followers of the traditional Japanese mountain worship called Shugendo and its ascetic practices. Mount Takao became a prominent base for Yamabushi in the late 14th century. 30 or so still continue Shugendo practices here. Sato has been a mountain ascetic on Takao for around 30 years, ever since he graduated from high school. Uh, first of all, what is this object that you're blowing? It's a conch shell. Yamabushi, like myself, who perform ascetic practices on the mountain, use them. We use them as a way to signal to each other. They're also traditionally associated with the voice of Shakyamuni, the founder of Buddhism. Those who hear the sound of the conch shell are said to have their hearts cleansed of worldly desires. They're said to be freed from mundane attachments. They then become inspired to believe in the teachings of the Buddha. In short, the sound represents the voice of Shakyamuni preaching Buddhism. Perhaps you could explain something about attire that you're wearing as well. The most symbolic piece of Yamabushi attire is this hat. It's called a toking. It's said to represent the form of the Buddha himself. But it also serves a more practical purpose. It acts as a helmet while you're doing ascetic practices in the mountain. It can protect you. And it's hollow, so it can be used to scoop and drink water from rivers and streams, just like this. Does it actually protect your head? Yes, it does. Sometimes we Yamabushi will be trekking around the mountain for 13 or 14 hours at a time. We're traveling along little game trails through dense forest, moving around. We'll be pushing through shrubbery and branches, and sometimes that means we'll get a whack on the head from a branch. Oh. Why do you do your practices in this particular mountain? 640 years ago, a monk named Shungen traveled here. He came from a temple in Kyoto called Daigoji. After he arrived at Mount Takao, he began taking part in very challenging ascetic practices. He found that Mount Takao was an ideal setting for the ascetic practices that the Yamabushi perform. So, he set out to make it a center of ascetic practices. He worked to attract more and more practitioners to the mountain. And that legacy has continued to this day. This is one of the rigorous practices performed by seekers of enlightenment on Mount Takao.
The freezing cold water dispels distracting thoughts, and the chanting of sutras helps to focus the mind. In this way, Yamabushi master themselves, obtain power from the mountain, and pray for the salvation of others. The practices are not restricted to full-time Yamabushi. Members of the public can also undergo them. This waterfall asceticism is very popular. 10,000 lay people do it every year. Now Peter will try one or two of these ascetic practices. So, Mr. Barakan, Mount Takao is famous for its very demanding ascetic practices, as we've just talked about. Today, I'd like to give you a little taste of Shugendo. <laughs> Nothing too hard, I hope. First, here's a Rokkon Shoujo stone prayer wheel. Okay, how does this work? The lettering here on the stone base says Rokkon Shoujo. Mm. Rokkon is a Buddhist term. It refers to our six senses. Sight, hearing, smell, taste, mm. and touch, plus our mind. Our mind processes the information from the other senses. Mm. When worldly desires cloud any of these six senses, a person becomes likely to lose their way. So, on Mount Takao, we seek to purge everything that would muddy our six senses. Shōjō means purge or purify. You spin it six times chanting Rokkon Shōjō to purify the six senses. Those words are inscribed on the wheel okay. too. So I have to go six times. Rokkon Shōjō, Rokkon Shōjō, Rokkon Shōjō, Rokkon Shōjō, Rokkon Shōjō, Rokkon Shōjō. That's six, I think. Well, it wasn't so hard. Yes, <laughs> but there are 18 of these prayer wheels on the mountain. By spinning each one six times, you do Rokkon Shoujo 108 times. In Buddhism, that's the number of worldly desires afflicting humans. Going around to all these 18 prayer wheels and spinning each of them six times is actually quite tough. Unfortunately, we don't have time to do that today. <laughs> oh. But 108 is also the number of steps in that flight of stairs. Mm. It's actually called the 108 steps. It has as many steps as the number of worldly desires. When you actually arrive at the bottom of it, it looks a lot more daunting. So, there are 108 steps. Mm. The idea is that you trample on one of your worldly desires with each step you go up. Mm. That's what's supposed to be happening. And when we Yamabushi do this, as an ascetic practice, we chant out a prayer to the Buddha. Mm. Chanting the sutra helps to pace our ascent. But the main purpose is to ask the sacred spirits of Mount Takao to cleanse our minds and souls. Mm. I'll chant... When you hear that, you respond by chanting Rokkon Shoujo, saying it quietly is fine. <laughs> then I'll go Rokkon Shoujo, and you respond again with Rokkon Shoujo, and then with each step imagine you're crushing one worldly desire. So, shall we try it? Okay. All right. I'll walk ahead of you. Please watch my feet and follow in my footsteps one by one. Okay. はい、それでは。さあ、ぎざんげ。ろっこんしょうじょう。さあ、ぎざんげ。ろっこんしょうじょう。ろっこんしょうじょう。ろっこんしょうじょう。さあ、ぎざんげ。ろっ We made it. So, how was it? 
you know, I was expecting it to be harder than it was, perhaps because we're chanting as we walk. It seemed to be finished almost before it started, so it was, um, it was almost like fun, actually. Next, we move on to a temple not too far from the summit, called Yakuo-in Yukiji. It was founded almost 1,300 years ago. Here, the sacred spirits of Mount Takao are worshipped. A constant stream of people comes to pray for health and relief from their problems of life. Now we've come to the temple precincts. Over there is where the protective deities of the mountain are worshipped. Oh. You see these statues, these are Tengu. The Tengu with the long nose is called Dai Tengu here on Mount Takao, and the one with a beak is known as Sho Tengu. These are the deities who watch over and protect the practitioners of Shugendo. They're like the guardians of the people who come to perform ascetic practices on the mountain, the people who are seeking Buddhist enlightenment. In fact, they themselves are regarded as Yamabushi. They're said to be representations of Yamabushi who have risen to the realm of deities. I see this one has in his hand, what is it, a kind of fan or something? Yes, this is the Tengu's fan. It represents the power to blow away the worldly desires that lead the mind astray. That's the significance of the fan. Ah. Notice that the other Tengu is holding a sword. That's not a weapon for striking blows. It's not meant to harm people or to break things. The significance of the sword is that it's supposed to cut our minds free from all those worldly desires. Oh. The implements that these two Tengu are holding are for freeing us from all the things that hold our minds captive. In recent years, products like baked goods with Tengu-inspired designs have helped make the Tengu the popular face of Mount Takao. And there have always been mysterious mountain legends concerning the Tengu. Here's one. This 450-year-old tree is called Takosugi, the octopus tree. As legend has it, Long ago, the Tengu wanted to open a path for humans to reach the temple, but this large tree was in the way. When the Tengu discussed chopping it down, the tree became so frightened that it curled its roots out of the way. There are many such stories about the Tengu of Mount Takao. They are popular figures in folklore. And on today's episode, I've come to the entrance of the main hiking trail on Mount Takao. That's because today's episode is all about hiking manners and etiquette in Japan. To that end, I've come here to meet Ms. Kako, who's with the Information Center here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, Hi. how am I dressed? What do you think? T-shirt, sandals, that's a no-no. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> why? Well, on a serious note, why is this bad? Mount Takao isn't very high, but it is a mountain. After you sweat, you can suddenly get a bit cold, so you need a second layer of clothing. Some people show up at Mount Takao wearing sandals or even high heels and end up with foot and leg injuries, or they get into other accidents. So it's very important to bring a top, and you must also make sure to wear proper hiking boots or running shoes. Hey, I got changed. Better? Perfect. Great. Okay, now, first things first. What should I pay attention to when I'm first climbing Mount Takao? You should plan your visit carefully. Although Mount Takao is not far from Tokyo at all, it does take 90 minutes to two hours to hike all the way up. So plan accordingly. You need to allow yourself enough time to get up and back down, especially in autumn and winter. In those seasons, the sun goes down and it gets dark early, so be sure to have a plan. 
you know, take it easy. <laughs> this is it. Hi. You know, I really love trail running. Is it okay to do trail running on Mount Takao? This is Mount Takao's trail number one. It leads to the temple, so it's not appropriate to run along it. Please make sure to walk on this trail. But you can certainly run on the other trails. However, there are always people taking their time walking up the mountain slowly, elderly people and children especially. When passing them, you always need to slow to a walk, or you may cause an accident or startle someone. So, you need to be considerate. Good to know. Let's continue. Look, see those red berries? Oh, there, huh? Ooh, I want to take a picture. I know you stepped off the trail like that to get a better photo of the plants, but under the soil is where the roots are. So if you step on them like that, you could damage the roots, then new plants won't grow. So please take care to stay on the marked trails. Don't step off them. Yeah, it's easy to lose sight of everything when you're looking in the rangefinder. Sorry, I won't do it again. Hi. Also, because Mount Takao is a protected area, collecting plants or animals is not allowed. The feeding of wild animals is prohibited as well. So, is there anything else I should keep in mind? Actually, Mount Takao is famous for being almost totally free of rubbish. Really? Mm. Well, let's give that a look-see. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I didn't find anything. Hi. Amazing. How do you keep the mountain so clean? We have a pack it in, pack it out rule at Mount Takao. We ask people to take their rubbish home with them. Actually, there are no rubbish bins here. Wow, that is really amazing. And there you have it. Next time you're visiting Tokyo and you step out of the city to come to Mount Takao, keep these little rules and tips in mind. I think they'll feel fine. They make your hike all the happier. Until then, see you next time. Let's go. At peak times of year, Mount Takao is visited by up to 30,000 people a day. There are thousands of nature lovers, and also children on school trips. This man climbs Mount Takao almost every day, and there's a reason for that. Good morning. You've come very early to hike up the mountain. I always come early. I'm doing the fitness promotion program. Do you see what I have here? of worries, but when I come to this mountain, it takes them away. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're nearing the top after 50 minutes of hiking from halfway up. At the 599 meter summit, there is a lookout point and rest area. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the summit of Mount Takao. I wasn't expecting to see this many people. Autumn is peak season for excursions, so the summit is packed. I certainly wasn't expecting to see quite so many people. This is a major tourist attraction because of this view, of course. Well, I'm sure it's one of the main reasons, anyway. When the weather is good, not like today, unfortunately, you can see Japan's most sacred mountain of all from here, Mount Fuji. When skies are clear, Mount Fuji is clearly visible in the distance. It's a beautiful view that you can't get in central Tokyo. You have large numbers of people coming up this mountain every day of the year, probably. What do you think it is that they're looking for? Well, the mountain has become famous as a tourist attraction. But in the past, the present, and in the future too, Mount Takao has been, is, and will be a place where people come to cleanse the spirit. 
There's so much life bursting forth from Mount Takao, from the smallest plants to the birds and the insects, to huge trees that are over 500 years old. There's all this life here. It's abundant. Everything here pulsates with the gift of life. And so the unspoiled nature and fresh air of the whole mountain expresses life itself, its power, its vitality, its diversity, all of those things. And that's why people who come here feel more energetic with each breath of Mount Takao's air. They themselves become more alive. They soak up the power of life that pervades this mountain and take it back down with them into their daily lives. And that's exactly what I would like them to do. On the little paths coming up here, just with the trees around you and the birds and all the, just, just the sounds of nature, and the feeling of the air is different. I mean, it is in all the different senses of, senses of the word a breath of fresh air, uh, and that was particularly appealing today. Thank you very much. It's been a nice experience. Thank you very much. Next time, another edition of our talk series, Japanophiles. Amir Takahashi from Iran is the owner of a popular bakery. We hear about his commitment to the craft of bread making.